self-awareness is not a one-time thing. It is actually a journey. It is a process. Welcome again to Live by Design with Grace Karaoke. So last segment, we talked about the first step towards living by design is actually to be self-aware. And self-awareness is not a one-time thing. It can really be daunting. It can be um, painful. It can be hard, but it is possible. And it is a process. It's a journey. So pace yourself. Don't feel like you have to do it just now. No, it takes time because you're going to have to look inside. You're going to have to think through things that have happened in your life so that you understand. I always say that you cannot heal yourself unless until you embrace your brokenness. Because if you do that, then you can heal that which was broken. What we do, we want to forget the brokenness and then focus on just the good stuff. And that is not your whole life. That is just part of who you are. Part of who you are, but not the whole of you. So we want to do self-discovery, self-awareness, so that you can embrace the whole of your life. When I was 12, um, I, I remember completely feeling so fed up with the way life was at home. My mom and dad their relationship was not loving, it wasn't fun. There was so much tension. There was a lot of verbal back and forth, what you would call verbal fights. And I remember that whenever the sun would be going down and it's about four o'clock, I remember something would begin to rise in me. Now I understand that is anxiety because dad was about to come home. And dad coming home, meant that there would be tension, there, there would be arguments. And I remember times I used to go and tell my mom, please just be quiet, don't talk back to him. And my mother would say to me, why should I be the one who keeps quiet? He can also keep quiet. And I used to have nightmares. And you know the nightmares were about, what if when I'm asleep, they fight? So I feared sleeping because if I am awake, I can stop them from fighting. But if I'm asleep, they might fight and somebody might get hurt. And as a child, 12, 10, 9, I couldn't sleep very well. I wetted my bed. Anxiety was so much, you know, the fear of the unknown. And I hated that life. So on this particular day, I am out there in the woods, as I used to like to do, and I'm lying down on the grass, looking into the sky and thinking to myself, when I grow up, I will have to learn and know and discover why human beings uh, behave the way they do. And the reason for that is because I kind of felt like um, my dad was to blame for the fights at home. I don't know why I blamed him, but he is the one I felt was at fault. And uh, my relationship with him was not really good. So at that moment in my life, I remember thinking, being this, this young girl who loved to read books, and I remember in my mind envisioning the kind of life I would like that I would like a home where it, there was no um, chaos, that people loved one another, people could talk together, and um, there was no anxiety, there was no fear, that when I saw people, my family members coming home, I would be excited rather than fearful. So that is the second step of this process of designing your life, is that you need to come up with the kind of life you want. You need to have that picture in your mind. What is it going to look like? Is there going to be peace? Is there going to be joy? Is there going to be love? Is there going to be harmony? What is it? Is there going to be plenty? 
because I grew up in a home where there wasn't plenty. So apart from the fact that we are not getting along, there was also the anxiety of whether we will have enough food, whether I will have school fees to be paid. Because again, the other fight between my parents was the fact that my father didn't want to work and my mother, she was a stay-at-home mom. So there was a, a little bit of, well, not a little bit, quite a bit of conflict right here. Because then I sensed that we were not safe. And so this is the other thing that I said to myself. Oh gosh, I remember that. I said to myself, I will never ask money from a man. Because I saw how my, my mom felt or how she would ask him for money and he would not have it or he would just say something that would again trigger the fights. So I do remember that uh, I did during my teenage years I said this thing of putting my hand out to a man I'll never do. So that was again another self-awareness and self-understanding that I want to be financially secure so I never have to rely on another human being. Well, I hope that this helps you even to think about your own life. What is that vision that you have for the future? What is that thing you desire that is not happening right now? Until next time, this is Living by Design with Grace Karyuki.